What's up, nerds? This is Mr. Storm, and this is part three of our Unity Pong 2D tutorial extravaganza. Um, so in the first video, we covered the basics of Unity and we imported some art uh, and made our little arena here. Uh, and in the second video, we dealt with programming. Uh, I showed you how to uh, attach some scripts to Unity and how to make the paddles move up and down. And now we have a two player uh, game where we can actually move the paddles independently and you and a friend can play against each other. The problem is the ball in the middle doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't move back and forth like it's supposed to and that's a problem. So we're going to fix that problem right now. Let's take a look at our ball and let's get a, get a quick refresher as to what we've done here just because it's been a while since we've actually messed around with this thing. So we have a basically one unit uh, square here that's acting as our ball. Um, it has a rigid body 2D. It uh, is. It has no gravity applied to it because we don't want it to fall through the bottom. Um, we have uh, constrained its rotation so that it won't randomly rotate in weird ways whenever it's moving through the through the uh, through the space here. Um, it has a box collider 2D on it. And that box collider has no physics material attached to it. Um, it's not a trigger. Uh, everything's basically just normal from the box collider 2D perspective. Now, here's a cool thing that we can do. This physics material, um, think about this like, um, I don't know, this, this would be like a, uh, think about it like this. Have you guys ever played Portal 2? In Portal 2, you get the goo gun thing, and you get to like spray a material on the surface, and it'll either like make you go faster or make you jump higher or whatever at, if you're on that material. That's kind of how the physics materials work in a 2D Unity environment. If we apply a physics material to this ball, we can make it super bouncy. We can make it a bouncy ball, uh, or we can do all kinds of other things to it. But um, bounciness is what we're looking for because we want it to ricochet. We want it to bounce off of these paddles and reverse its direction um, very, very quickly. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to set up a physics material and we're going to apply it to our ball. So what we can do down here is just make sure we're in our assets folder because we really don't have a place to put this. We don't have a materials folder. I guess we could create one. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and create a materials folder just to Again, keep everything organized. Okay, so we have our materials folder and inside the material we want to create and we want to go down to physics material 2D. We want a new physics material. Okay, and uh, let's see, let's call this ball material. Okay, so this is now a new physics material. Um, if we click on it and look in the inspector, we actually have two options we can change. We can change its friction value and its bounciness value. So which one do you think we're going to be more focused on in this one? Obviously, we want to make its bounciness awesome. Uh, we're not, we don't really care about the friction because we're not going to be sliding against materials in this game. Uh, but we do want to set the bounciness to one. Um, so now what we, what we have to do is we have to apply this ball material to the box collider 2D of our ball. And it's actually just as simple as clicking on it, dragging it all the way over, and just dropping it right in there. So now we have a ball material around the box collider for the ball, right? So now the ball will bounce off of anything that it comes into contact with. Um, and, and that's it. That's really all we had to do to make the ball bouncy. Um, but our ball still will not move. If we played the game right now, the ball would just sit there because we haven't told it to move. Um, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else we need to do on the rigid body yet? Um, okay. Well, here's one thing that might be an issue. Our mass is set to one. Now, that's not entirely massive. That's not a super hugely massive thing. But we want to make sure that the mass isn't big enough to push these paddle paddles off of it, their like track. You know what I mean? We don't want this ball to collide with the paddle at uh, and have it be so dense and massive that it actually pushes the paddle uh, backward because that would kind of mess up our game. So we're going to set the mass from 1 to like 0 0.00001, just whatever, a really small number, just to make sure it won't actually do anything 
to this paddle whenever it pushes into it. Okay, cool. Uh, we've constrained the rotation. We have set the gravity to be zero. All that works perfectly. Great. Now let's talk about how to let's talk about how to uh, make this ball actually uh, uh, go back and forth in the arena, right? So to do that, in order to make movement happen, we're going to have to write a new script. So we've already done this before, so it should be pretty easy for you to understand how to do this. But just to review, let's uh, let's do it again. Oh, let's do it again together. So with my ball selected. I want to add a new script to the ball. So I'm going to scroll down to new component or add component. Sorry. I'm going to scroll down to new script. And I'm actually going to just call this ball. It's going to be my ball script. And it's going to be in C sharp language. I'm going to click create and add. Now, if you think back, where did that actually go? Where did that script go? It went into our assets folder because that's our default folder for, for all of our materials, for all the things that we're using in this game. Uh, I want to put that into my scripts folder to keep everything organized. And when I go into scripts, I can see the move racket script that we wrote before with all the things that we wrote in there. And we have an empty ball script. Okay, so I'm going to open up the ball script. And here it is. I'm going to get rid of this debug menu, drop that down a little bit. Now, remember my little idiosyncrasies, I like to change some things up in here right away. So I like to, oh, I like to get rid of the default methods they give us. And I like to put that uh, bracket on the same line. Okay, so now let's talk about what we're going to need to do with this. First of all, we need a speed. We need, we need a speed for the ball to travel, right? So we've done that before, uh, and it's literally going to be the same as what we've done before. We'll public float speed equals 30, right? We're just going to set it to move at the same speed as the paddles. Perfect. That's all we need to do, right? Well, no, not really. That's just a speed variable. Now we need to actually make that speed apply to the velocity of the rigid body on our ball. So we need to do that immediately once the script is called. So how do we do that? Well, one of the default methods that I just got rid of is a start method. And that start method will call any code inside of it as soon as the game runs or as soon as that script is called. So let's bring back our start method. So I'm going to do void. Uh, it needs to be capital start. And inside of my start, I'm going to get component. And I'm going to get the rigid body 2D component. And I'm going to access the velocity of the rigid body 2D component. And I want to set it to a vector 2 dot right times speed. Okay. So if we wrote this correctly, basically what we've done is we are getting the component. We are getting a component of the object this script is attached to, the ball. And the component we're getting is the rigid body 2D. And the value of that rigid body that we're going to change is its velocity, right? Its movement through the space. And that's going to be equal to vector 2 dot right, meaning it's going to set a right vector times speed. So it's going to go at the speed to the right, right? And now that we set up the bounciness, it should actually ricochet back and, and come back to the left when it hits the wall or a paddle or whatever. So I'm going to attach that to Unity, get out of debug mode, and go back to my game and hit play. Oh, hold on. Give it a second and hit play. So now we see my ball is bouncing back and forth. It's hitting the paddles and going back and forth. And I can, you know, move the paddles and, and whatnot. Now, you may already have noticed there's a problem with the game. Namely, the problem is I can't really change the angle that this ball is, is hitting off of these paddles. Pong is supposed to have the ball ricochet off the top at like a, I don't know, 30 degree angle.
but going up if it hits the top and like a 30 degree angle going down if it hits the bottom so that we can change the angle that this ball will travel in the game, make it a little bit more chaotic and fun. This isn't really that much fun. I mean, at least we have movement, but there's really no fun here, right? Unless we perfectly, oh, I trapped it. Unless we perfectly can hit it as it's passing by, just like that, we can't really change the angle unless we perfectly hit it. So we're going to change that. Let's make it so that the ball will reflect off of the paddles in a specific way to make the game more fun. Alrighty. So let's go to, hmm. You know, we can do all this in the ball script. Let's call that back up. All right. So we have our ball script here. Now we have our start method, but we can use another method here. So what we want to do is we actually want to change. Let's, ooh, we can use a new method here that we've never used before. This method is called on collision enter 2D. So what that means is essentially this will fire off anytime there's a collision, right? And if there's a collision, whatever's inside of this method will actually run. So we're going to create this method real quick. So on collision, collision, enter 2D. Now, again, it is really important that you spell everything correctly because if you don't, Unity is not going to recognize it. On collision, enter 2D is a, um, it's a method that Unity does recognize and it takes arguments. So it takes a collision 2D and Actually, well, I don't know why I put a space there. It takes a collision, collision 2D and whatever we want to name it. I'm going to just call mine col call. All right. So now we have void on collision enter 2D. Inside, we want to um, write in all the code that's going to make our ball bounce in the appropriate way. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to, let's take a look. Hmm. All right, we want an if statement because we want to determine if the ball hit the top of the racket or if it hit the bottom of the racket. First, we want to make sure it hit a racket at all. And if it hit a racket, we need to know which racket that was. So let's start this off with an if. So if call.gameObject.name, basically, what is the object? What is the name of the game object that we collided with? And if it's, oh, what is going on here? If the name of it is racket left, which I believe that's what we named our, uh, no, it's not. It's just racket. Actually, let's rename these really quick so that it makes it easier for our coding. Racket left and uh, rename racket right. Okay, so racket left, racket right. So if the name is racket left, then what we want to do is we'll create a float variable. We'll set that equal to hit factor transform dot position col dot transform dot position col dot collider dot bounds dot size dot y okay that's a lot so let's uh let's take a look at what this means basically what we're doing is we're creating a y variable and inside of that we're putting a hit factor a hit factor is um, let's see, that's the best way to explain hit factor. So the hit factor is essentially where, how fast, and when did something collide. We're looking at the, the, the factor of the hit. We're trying to figure out what happened with that collision. Um, so the hit factor can hold a couple of different values. Uh, for example, <clears throat> the position of the ball itself the position of whatever it collided with, and the bounds of the collider itself. Okay, 
So those are the things that we're storing with that. Now what we want to do with this y variable is we want to create a new vector to vector two. We're going to call it direct dir for direction. Uh, and inside this direction variable, let's put a new vector two. Uh, let's do one and y dot normalized so that it's a little bit more smooth. So we're going to calculate the direction it was traveling when it hit. And then we are going to get get component and it's going to be the rigid body 2D. And let's do the velocity equals direction times speed. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're figuring out a new direction to travel based on where the collision happened on the paddle. Did the ball hit the top? Did the ball hit the bottom? If it hit the bottom, it would return a negative number. So then we would be changing our direction in the, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, the negative number is going to change the direction in a negative direction. The positive number is going to change the direction in a positive direction. So it'll ricochet off at a either positive or negative direction based on whether it hit the top or the bottom of the paddle. I guess it's the easiest way to explain it. Um, you know, there's a reason why computer programming is a math class, <laughs> because there is some math involved. Um, but I'm pretty sure this will work. I'm trying to just run through my code here, my brain in the old brain pan. And I'm pretty sure it'll work. Um, now all we have to do is just repeat the same thing for the right paddle. So we can actually just copy all of this and paste it. And instead of racket left, we're going to call it racket right. And what else do we need to change here? Um, the collider bound size. Do, 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 do. Oh, we want this to be negative one because we want it to return the other direction. Um, other than that, I think everything else in here is, is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, racket left, racket right. All right, what else do I need to do here? Hmm, I think that's it. I think this will actually work. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's try to attach it to Unity. Ooh, there are build errors. Okay, this is fun. This is whenever we can start troubleshooting our code because we have an error in our build. All right, let's see. Hit factor does not exist. Okay. Um, what did I do with hit factor? Did I not? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to create the hit factor variable, right? I was trying to explain it to you, but I didn't actually create it yet and I kind of need to create it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and create a new hit factor variable. Um, so let's do, all right, let's create hit factor. Oh, hit factor. Let's put it in up here. Why not? Um, let's call float hit factor vector two. So we need ball position, vector two, racket position, uh, float racket height. Okay, so these are all of the arguments that are taken in by this method. All right, let's come down here and separate these a little bit. So this is a hit, hit factor is a method. Uh, we're going to return. And we'll return the ball pause dot y. And the racket minus the racket pause dot y divided by racket height. Okay, so that should actually work. Uh, so we're taking the ball's position, we're subtracting it from the racket's position, basically seeing where the ball is on 
the racket, and we're dividing that by height. So we can actually pinpoint exactly where exactly where the ball is hitting on our paddle. All right, now it should actually work. Let's attach that to Unity. Everything looks good. So one mistake, we fixed it. We win, huzzah. And now the truth is in the testing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And if this game works exactly the way we expect it to, then that means I'm amazing. And everyone should buy me a soda. All right, so boom. Oh, 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 look. Oh my gosh. It hit exactly, it did exactly what we wanted it to. And now we have a game, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so now it is, it's bouncing off exactly where it needs to bounce. And I'm playing against myself. And I'm not doing a very good job. Okay, now let's just re let this run for a minute. So let's talk about the game itself. This is about as far as I'm going to take you. This project is really just intended to be a, an introductory project. I just wanted you guys to get uh, something moving around in Unity, do some kind of programming, uh, and understand the basic concepts of it. Um, now, if we were to make this into an actual game with winners and losers, uh, we would want to have some kind of user interface on top so that we could enter the game. We would want to have some kind of instructions telling the, per telling the players how to play the game. We would want to have... Um, you know, a scoring system uh, where if, if the if the ball hit, you know, the wall left or the wall right, it would add variables. It would add a scoring variable to either side and it would display on top of the screen, all that kind of stuff. We're not going to worry about that right now. It's, we have an actual playable game right now and we can just keep scoring our head if we want. But the last thing I want to do is I want to show you how to build a project in Unity, because this is incredibly important. If you don't know how to build a project, you're not going to be able to turn in your project. So let me go ahead and show you how to build this project in Unity. It's actually a simple process. First of all, let's make sure we save everything. Uh, so I'm going to just save project, and I'm going to save scene, and I'll probably save project again because I'm paranoid. Now if we go down to build settings, we can see that we have a lot of options in how we want to build this game. We can build it for PC, we can build it for the web, iOS, uh, Apple TV, we can build it for Android phones, Xbox One, uh, PlayStation 4, Facebook, whatever we want to build it for. We're actually just going to build this for the PC, Mac, Linux, standalone, just a regular computer game. We can check what platform we want to target it. Um, I only have the Windows package here, so it's only going to pull up Windows for me. Uh, I can do x86 or x86 hyphen or underscore 4 which essentially is the difference between 64-bit and 32-bit operating systems um, I can make it a development build which will uh, allow my source code to be manipulated and changed and looked at and all it's it, a whole thing um, right now this is fine so all I'm gonna do is click add open scenes so that my main scene gets attached to the build right and then I'm gonna click build uh, well, we can go into player settings and we can do all kinds of stuff here, but we're not worried about that today. I'm going to go ahead and just click build. Now it's going to ask me where I want to put it. Um, so this is asking me if I want to put it in my Pong folder. And I could, I could dig through my file system and try to find my game, but I really don't want to. I'm just going to put it right on my desktop so that I can see it right whenever I open up the open up uh, my computer. It'll be right there and I can just double click it and play it. I'm going to call it Pong. Okay, and it's going to be an exe file because it's an executable file. I'll click save, and it's building. Okay, we'll just give that a second to run. Just a second, and looks like it's done. So let's go ahead. Oh, hold on. So now if we go to our desktop, we can see I have a Pong game here. Okay. The other thing that I have is this Pong data folder. This is an important folder as well. Okay, this, this folder is super important. Um, but the Pong game itself, now I can, I'm going to play it windowed because I have no way to exit out of the game once I open it. I haven't programmed that in. I'm going to set it to the right screen resolution, take a look at the inputs, whatever. Click play. And now I have my Pong game. It is playable. It's, a, it's an executable file in Unity. If I wanted to give this to a friend, I could put that Pong data and the Pong exe 
on a flash drive and give it to him and he can take those home and, and, and play it right from the flash drive if you wanted to. Um, but this is, this is the power of unity, my friends. This is why it's so awesome. You can make something in about an hour, uh, and you can give it to someone and say, Hey, look what I just made. Um, enjoy it. And so, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it for the first project. I mean, after this, they're going to get more advanced. They're going to get awesome. Um, but for right now, all you have to do is take these two files and upload them to Google Classroom. And then I will have, well, you're going to want to zip these together probably. Right click and send to compressed folder. And it's called Pong. I use 7 zip, so that's why my icon's different. But now I have this, you know, this folder, this compressed folder called Pong. You can upload that to. Um, Upload that to uh, Google Classroom, and that's how you turn in your assignment. Um, okay, uh, that's it. I will see you in the next tutorial series uh, where we're going to build a new game, a different game, a fun game. Um, kind of a lot of the same ideas, but a little bit more advanced. We're going to step it up as we go. Uh, but thank you for paying attention, and I will see you next time.